So basically I'm starting off with a square and now I have a grid of points uh, that are actually going to allow me to create my, my diamond grid. So what does that do? Well, at every single one of these points now, we have a, a plane, an XZ plane that's rotated 45 degrees. And so how do we get the proper dimensions? Well, it's just a very simple trigonometry, right? And because we have multiple planes, it creates a grid of different cells. Okay, so let's say you have a project like this and you need to make some kind of like diamond grid. Like it's a square grid, except it's rotated 45 degrees. So that's like, it's like a diamond grid, right? And and I did a short video on this project specifically if you wanna take a look at like the whole project. But let's take a look at just the diamond grid formation and let's talk about, uh, you know, quickly how that kind of works. So this is our base grid, our diamond grid formation. And let's work backwards and see how we got here. Uh, first of all, I'll say that, um, you know, uh, you, the obvious way to do this, um, maybe, I didn't choose to do it this way, but the obvious, obvious way to do this might be to make a square grid. And in this case, I'm putting it on the X, Z plane. I'm going to put in some arbitrary numbers here. Um, this is what you could do, and I'm not recommending this, but this is, uh, this is, this is an option. You could make a square grid. And then you could you could take that square grid and you can rotate it 45 degrees. But then you you're gonna have this you're gonna have this grid and you're gonna have to somehow uh, you're gonna have to establish the boundaries of this grid parametrically if you want to make a real parametric model. And then you're gonna have to cull most of these most of these cells. Uh, so it, it would have to look something like this. You need you need to create some type of culling. Um, uh, algorithm. Okay, so it could look something like this, right? Basically, I'm using the rectangle as my frame. Uh, that's my boundary. Uh, and that's, that is what the boundary is in this project. Okay, and then I'm taking this, uh, tr this diamond grid that I've created, um, finding the, uh, the center points by averaging all the area centroids. And then I'm orienting it using the also the center point, the center, the centroid of the frame, and I'm orienting it from this point to this point. So we get uh, we get our new oriented uh, grid. And if I wanted to optimize this, I would create some type of algorithm so that this grid is not too large. But again, this is the method that I wouldn't use, so I'm not going to go and optimize this. And then, but what, we, what we'd have to do is use something like point in curve or some type of uh, some type of way to identify which cells are inside the frame and which ones are not. And so in this case, I'm using a pointing curve, which will say, which will test is each point inside the frame, yes or no. And then we can use a culling, some type of culling script to, uh, to isolate only the, the curves that are inside that frame, okay? So that's an option, uh, but for me, like the way that I like to think about these types of problems, this is not very precise because it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to establish the edge conditions. Um, well, it's not, it wouldn't really be that difficult, but um, but I think there's a better way to do it. Uh, this might be a good option in some, some cases, maybe. But let's look at a different way to do this. Uh, which might be a little bit less intuitive, but I think once you get it, I think I think it will make a lot of sense. So basically, I'm starting off with a square, and already our boundary is perfectly uh, established. We don't have a whole bunch of extra cells in this method because I'm starting off with a square grid, and you can see that it's extending past the frame, but that's totally intentional because that's just exactly what this project looks like. It, it has a certain number of cells, and then there's a half cell at the edge condition. And you can take a look at the project if you want to see uh, the video uh, the video made about this project specifically. Um, and I'm starting off with that square grid, and it's exactly what I want it to look like. And then uh, I'm just going to take the area component. So I'm going to take the area, and I'm going to use the centroid points from from each cell and I'm also going to use the the vertex points of uh, from the square grid component okay which looks like this looks like this so th those are the vertex points from each cell basically or you can think of it as like the intersection points uh, between w within that grid right and I'm gonna take both of those sets of points 
and I'm going to sort them using um, using the sort points component to keep everything organized. And now I have a grid of points uh, that are actually going to allow me to create my my diamond grid. And so with these points, I'm going to I'm going to place some x z uh, planes because I'm building this this screen in the vertical orientation in the x y in the x z plane. So I'm placing all these planes, and then I'm rot and I'm using a rotate plane. And I'm going in here and I'm typing it. I'm going to degrees. If you want to use radians, you can. You're free to do that. I like using degrees. And then I go to set number and I set it to 45. Okay. So what does that do? Well, at every single one of these points now, we have a, a plane, an X Z plane that's rotated 45 degrees. And that means that when we plug these planes into a rectangle component, all of our rectangles now are rotated 45 degrees. And because our original square grid was perfectly confined to our frame. We don't have any extra diamond uh, grid cells. And so how do we get the proper dimensions? Well, it's just a very simple trigonometry, right? We take the original square grid cell size, which is about 869.56. And it doesn't really matter what that number is. But whatever you're plugging into your square grid cell size, you plug that into the trig component. You put it into R because it's the hypotenuse, right? Right. Let's take a look at this, right? Um, we're putting it into R because if you imagine R is the hypotenuse and then our output is P. So if you imagine like the, because, um, this original square size, the square, the size of the square cell, we're using that as our hypotenuse because if we draw a circle or we draw a triangle, sorry. Okay. So if we imagine a triangle here where this is our hypotenuse and what we're trying to get is our edge length for our new diamond grid. Well, we put this here and now we see that our hypotenuse is the length of our original square and our, the, our base length is the length of our diamond grid square, right? And that's why we're using the, the grid of the original square grid, the size of the original square grid as our hypotenuse. And we're taking out the P length, which is our base curve length, the base of our triangle. And we put that into a domain, uh, domain component, because we're trying to make a square from the center point of our rotated plane. And so we put it into domain and now, and we use an expression negative X divided by two in the A and X divided by two in the B so that it goes half, it goes halfway, uh, whatever this number is. It goes halfway in this direction, halfway in this direction, half in this, half in this. And that's how we get a square that's this dimension, but it's coming out from the center point. And because we have multiple planes, it creates a grid of different cells. And that's it.